There's news that needs reporting, the kind that impacts us here and all across Central Florida. Jim Payne, Summer Knowles, First Warning Chief Meteorologist Tony Manolfi. Local, live, late-breaking coverage. Weekdays at 6 on West 2 News. First at 6, gruesome new details about a triple murder and the evidence that led law enforcement to their suspect. Plus, an already wild chase goes off the road where the trouble started and how deputies brought it all to an end. And later, local renters put in a bind. Rent is skyrocketing, turning a troublesome, troublesome time into a full-blown crisis. We're looking at the costs and what may happen if Central Floridians can't afford them. Local, live, late-breaking. WESH 2 NEWS STARTS NOW. A Kissimmee man is behind bars today after allegedly shooting and killing a father, his 16-year-old son, and their friend. Kevin Torres now faces 18 criminal charges. Already, he has a long history of criminal and mental health problems. Now, this comes with a warning. Some of the new details are graphic. West 2's Marley Martinez tells us why the sheriff hopes mental health is not a factor in this case. Developing right now, the Florida legislature is poised to pass a bill banning federal coronavirus measures. Governor Ron DeSantis called a special session to pass bills, which are part of an ongoing feud with the White House. The Florida House has already passed them. Now it's up to the Florida Senate. Republicans say they're protecting workers from being fired over vaccine mandates. Democrats say the bills are political theater meant to service DeSantis, who is running for re-election. A Brevard County woman faced a judge today accused of killing her nine-month-old son. The case actually started a year ago in Palm Bay. Police say Shankila Beckham Williams called 911 from her home saying that the baby stopped breathing. The nine-month-old was taken to the hospital but died. And according to court records, Beckham Williams told police that the baby fell over onto the floor and hit his head. But an autopsy showed that he had been abused and neglected over a period of time. It reported things like deep bruising and that he had been suffering with pneumonia. State prosecutors asked for no bond, but the judge said that that was not possible. I'm going to find that um, that I do have to set a bond, that I can't hold her no bond just based on the extreme nature of the charges. Um, on the first degree felony, I'm going to set the bond in this case at 125000 Beckham Williams is charged with aggravated manslaughter of a child, and she was also on probation for a prior drug charge. Trial has been pushed back again for the man accused of killing his wife and three children in their home in celebration. It is now set to start on January 24th. Anthony Tote is accused of murdering his family in 2020. And the biggest concern that the judge and attorneys have is jury selection. They say they worry about finding a jury here because of the intense media coverage. In addition to jury selection, the state has about 20 witnesses. And if there aren't any problems with the new star date, the trial is expected to run through February 11th. A man is recovering after he was shot in Orlando. Officers say they found the man in his 20s on Oak Haven Drive this morning near Oak Ridge Road. He was rushed to the hospital. Police say his injuries are not life-threatening and they have not released any information about a shooter. Today marks 10 years since Orange County mother Michelle Parker disappeared. Investigators are still searching for Parker, who vanished in 2011. Parker disappeared on the same day she and her ex-fiance, Dale Smith, appeared on a taped episode of the People's Court arguing over a lost engagement ring. She was last known to be alive when she was seen dropping off her twin children at Smith's condo near Goldenrod Road and Lee Vista Boulevard. Parker's Hummer was found on November 18, 2011, in an Orlando parking lot, divers found her iPhone under a bridge the next month. Smith is the only suspect in the case. He was never formally charged. Orlando police say he is still someone of interest, but they believe someone else is out there with more information. New at 6, an Orlando man will spend six years in prison and a lifetime of supervised release for possessing child pornography. A judge revoked the supervised release of 38-year-old Jason Moriarty. Court records show that back in 2004, Moriarty 
was sentenced to 20 years in prison on child porn charges. And then in July of this year, he began his supervised release. Now, investigators say he violated the terms of his release by ac accessing a computer at a library back in August. Federal agents say they found more than 400 images that he had saved of child pornography. He was found guilty on Monday. A DeBerry man is accused of secretly recording women visiting his home. 28-year-old Thomas Panic was arrested on Tuesday. Detectives say the crimes happened in 2019 and 2020. Investigators say his ex-girlfriend moved out of the house last month and found a flash drive with inappropriate images of her friends. Investigators say the videos recorded the victims in an office and a guest bedroom of the home where they were staying. Kyle Rittenhouse's attorneys have asked the judge to declare a mistrial before the jury reaches a decision. His attorneys say they received a poor copy of key video from prosecutors. The defense says it would have taken a different approach if it had received the high quality video earlier. Attorneys say the request would be made without prejudice. That means prosecutors could try Rittenhouse again if the judge granted the request. New tonight, a man is behind bars accused of leading police on a chase in a stolen car. Marion County deputies say they stopped Charles Poland because the car he was in was reported stolen in South Carolina. Deputies say he sped off trying to get away. Deputies deployed stop sticks on Marion Oaks Trail and attempted a pit maneuver. That's when they claimed Poland slammed on the brakes, ramming the deputy's patrol car. Eventually, the vehicle stopped and Poland allegedly tried to run away. He was later captured and is being held on no bond. More than a thousand manatees have died in Florida so far this year, and that is a new record as the marine mammals struggle in polluted waters. New numbers from the Florida Wildlife Commission show 1,003 manatee deaths. Brevard County saw more than any other in Florida with 327. Lee County, which is in southwest Florida, saw 104 deaths, and Volusia County had the highest, the third highest, with 71. Experts say that manatees are dying from starvation from polluted waters. FWC urges you to participate in beach and shoreline cleanups to pick up any trash. Experts also ask boaters to follow all posted waterway signs. Also new at 6, Marion County is in desperate need of bus drivers. The district is driving mobile hiring units directly to communities where drivers are needed the most. On Thursday, December 2nd, they'll drive to the locations that are listed here on your screen. Anyone interested can fill out an application online or on the spot. Starting pay for a school bus driver is $15.65 an hour hour with six hours guaranteed each day. All right, a big day for two local canines. Months after they were shot in the line of duty, they received two big awards. Plus, next time you take a Disney cruise, you will have to bring something extra. The new rules for everyone over age five. But first, priced out. An affordable housing epidemic that's been going on for years is only getting worse. Where we stand when it comes to rentals in Central Florida. Tony. Jim, it was a warmer day. Many of us uh, jumped into the 80s now. Big ridge of high pressure is pumping up some moisture. That means rain is on the way. We'll time that out. Plus, we're taking a look at that weekend forecast all straight ahead. Tonight at 11, Central Florida's first responders pushing for line of duty benefits to include COVID-19. We don't really know from one employer to the next what's going to happen. West, who explores the fight to make this happen in Florida. I think the workers' comp law is failing us on a grand scale. Even though many first responders remain unvaccinated. You're going to tell me what I'm going to put in my body. They're taking our freedom of choice away, and it's just not right. Tonight at 11, only on West 2 News. New at 6, the affordable housing crisis in Central Florida is only getting worse. It's a problem that Western News has been investigating for years, and now skyrocketing rents are pricing people out of apartments. We're talking all over Orlando. West News' Amanda Duke spoke to experts about why the steep increase is happening. Okay, Jim, we are riding the weather roller coaster here. Yeah, we're on our way up, and, mm -hmm. and Tony, it looks like we're heading on our way down, down. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah in, in not so many words, you're right. Uh, I drive for you right now. We're looking pretty good there. A few clouds outside. Temperature 75 degrees. And as we take a look now at Friday night football, a couple showers around, uh, but certainly not turning cold. Uh, if you want colder weather, you're going to have to wait to next week. Heading into the weekend, storm system cranks up, pulls away. A lot of the rain we think on Saturday, the, at least the heaviest, is going to be along the coast. But from time to time, 
Some of those showers will build inland. Rainfall chances on Sunday still there, but mainly confined to the coast, where, again, we're going to be watching for some dangerous marine conditions all weekend long. Rainfall amount European through the upcoming weekend, hinting at, in the darker shade of green, one to two inches of rain. Uh, you can see some of those convergent bands coming ashore there. But for the uh, the football game, the Huskies are in town taking on our beloved Knights. A couple of isolated showers around for the kickoff there. But the bigger developing story is another cold snap headed our way. Christmas Eve to front. It's Christmas Eve. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Eve, I should say. Fronts down to the south. That drier and that colder air builds on in. And we could be looking at some upper 30s into northern Marion County uh, by the time we wake up on Wednesday. However, for Thanksgiving Day, Things begin to moderate as we'll jump back up into the upper 70s. Let's take a look now at the updated seven-day forecast. 75 to 80 through the weekend, Monday and Tuesday. There's the big cool down. Darren waiting in the wings. He's got the latest in sports next. West 2 Sports is sponsored by Mullinax Ford, where our low upfront prices and no dealer fees makes buying fast and easy. Shop Mullinax, Florida's largest Ford retailer. Now, West 2 Sports, sponsored by Mullinax Ford. Hello, everybody. I'm Darren Stoltz. Fist Orlando City is back in the MLS playoffs, and they have dreams of dancing past the second round this time around. Kendra Douglas with the Lions as they prepare for their trip to Nashville next week. That will do it for sports. The news is back right after this. Stay tuned to West 2 for NBC Nightly News, sponsored locally by Morgan & Morgan. That would be the Marcel Marceau look at NBC Nightly News. Yeah, a little behind the scenes action for you there tonight. You, there you go. <laughs> Today, two Volusia County canine officers were awarded Purple Hearts after they were shot in September. Canines X and Endo are likely receiving some extra treats tonight. The dogs were wounded pursuing an armed carjacker. X was shot in the face and Endo was shot in the jaw and the paw. Both canines have since recovered and the suspect is behind bars. We think about the, the veterans that, that serve and, and are injured and come back and, and can wear a purple heart. I feel honored that the Indo can wear a purple heart alongside with, with K9 Axe. In the aftermath of the Deltona shooting, a Georgia nonprofit stepped in to pay the dog's medical bills. They did a good job. They yeah. did their job. A couple of fine looking hounds right there. Yeah, that absolutely. is for sure. And that's our report for tonight. NBC Daily News with Lester Holt is next. And we're going to see you again tonight at 10 and 11 o'clock. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, news is always online on WESH.com.